A great dashboard is a lifeblood of a SaaS product. It's the very first thing the user sees when they sign into your product. So let me show you how to design a top-notch dashboard that promotes quick decision making. And here is something to sweeten the deal. I've put together a SaaS dashboard checklist to aid your journey. It's entirely free and it will ensure you don't miss any crucial steps into your dashboard design process. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is to define how the dashboard is going to be used. Typically, there are three types of dashboards – analytical, strategic and operational. Let's go over each one. A good example of an analytical dashboard is the one that we did for Hammond Diagnostics that shows contagion graph with projections. Those are great for things like weekly performance metrics, trends or establishing company targets. Strategic dashboards, on the other hand, are for those interested in analyzing organizational KPIs, tracking monthly performance and meeting KPIs objectives. We designed one of those for Enrolly, a student engagement app. It shows the data on CAS, confirmation of acceptance for studies, like how many students applied, from which countries, how they do with their arrival milestones, and so on. And lastly, we've got operational dashboards for tracking daily performance, raising employee awareness, and goal setting. To give you an example, here's one we created for a customer experience platform, which helps managers analyze chat performance and customer satisfaction. Alright, up next we've got something that I cannot stress enough, and that is considering the users. At the end of the day, whatever the purpose of your dashboard is, your number one objective should be making your users take action. How else are you going to get feedback from them, right? You need to ask yourself a few questions. What are the people that will view my dashboard? What data do they need to make decisions? What is their understanding of the metrics? Do they have experience working with data? What misconceptions might they have about visuals and color? Keep in mind that your users see data a lot differently than you do, so you always have to put their needs and goals first. And up next we've got to define what metrics to monitor. Users make better decisions when they have the right data and context. If you know what decision they need to make, you'll know what to track. There are a bunch of things you can do. Interview users to learn what decision they want to be more informed on. Learn how they currently inform themselves about these decisions. Take into account users' goals. Think of all the decisions they need to make to reach them. And then single out those that need to be supported with data. And finally, talk to a user to pinpoint the metrics that will inform their decisions and provide answers to their concerns. Alright, and up next we've got to choose the right visualization for each metric. A chart makes it far simpler for a user to identify trends than spreadsheet do. Creating a useful dashboard is a matter of knowing which chart to use to depict a dataset. We have a selection system at Alacan that we use to choose one dashboard over the other, and here it is. First, we have a single value chart that shows a significant metric that is quickly noticed. Then we have a single value with an indicator to show a significant metric that's changed. A bullet chart to show a highly significant indicator in comparison to a goal. Then we have a table that shows two-dimensional datasets that may be categorized or break up big datasets that have a natural drill path. Up next we've got a line chart that expresses continuous data, identifies general trends and patterns, compares how they change over time or makes forecasts. And then we've got a bar chart that shows change over time, compares well values that fall in the same category and expresses how partial values relate to a whole value. Our second to last one is a pie chart that provides information in quick, digestible chunks. And our final one is a bubble chart to show how several quantitative variables relate to each other. And now that we've got all that covered, let's go over our final point, which is to organize the dashboard. All you have to do now is to put a nice bow on all the information I gave you by putting things in the right order. The first thing you should do is to create a prototype of the dashboard. It can be done as a simple sketch or with low fidelity tools. Then to arrange all the charts together, put them in a grid that will help you to create a basic structure for your dashboard. Next, make sure that all the important metrics are grouped together so that user doesn't have to search across your dashboard. And next, we've got something that a lot of products mess up. Please mind how you use the white space. There should be enough of it to make the design light and uncluttered, but not so much that it becomes difficult to understand which charts belong together. And finally, keep the the dashboard consistent. Reuse design elements in different charts over your dashboard. Before we wrap up, I want to remind you to grab your free copy of the SaaS dashboard design checklist. It's easily accessible through the link in the description below. Use it to make your dashboard design journey a whole lot smoother. Alright, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was useful. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and see you in the next one.